All right, everyone. Um, welcome to another episode of Madness University. For this topic today, we are going to talk about apps in the hobby and apps that make collecting and investing in sports cards easier, just make our lives easier. So, um, you know, I think LZ, why don't you go first? You're more of the uh, the tech guy between the two mm -hmm. of us. So I know you've probably got some cool ones that the audience hasn't heard of. Yeah, well, I, I they're all cool, Nick. All the apps. There are a lot of apps out there. I know it can get very overwhelming, geez, if you go to the app stores and you start searching for these, you find a lot, which to the point you made around me being a tech guy, I love. I love. I think this is going to be a big year for apps in general, for the space. I hope it is. I'm seeing some trends and I'm liking what I see. But if I were to kind of go with, let's call it the top three apps that that I use the most. They're really going to be the obvious ones. Um, I use eBay a lot. I'm using eBay to do a lot of research. Uh, that app is pretty easy to use as long as you know how to sort correctly. We talk about this a lot, but when you're looking up the value of cards, make sure that you're looking at the sold and completed price as opposed to what the seller wants to get because they are completely different. But eBay is a good one. I think everybody should have eBay on their phone. Um, it's just a really good kind of quick for, quick reference for you. Um, number two, it's another one we talk about a lot. Uh, but for those who are just tuning in for the first time, uh, it is 130 point. And they have a website, but they also, you know, they have a an app or in a, I just even just bookmark the the website um to to my homepage on my phone. That one is similar to what I was explaining with eBay. 130 point just shows you sold prices of cards. Uh it's easy to you just go in there, you search up your card. But the good thing about that is it includes all the eBay sales, but it also includes a lot of the auction houses as well. So you get better coverage there. I, I actually do find that one to be a bit cleaner, a bit easier to use than eBay, only because I don't have to go and sort by sold or completed because that's all it is, folks. So I would say that one. And then Nick, the third one that I do use a lot, and it's another obvious one, folks, but you know maybe you're not aware, is just the PSA set registry. So use the PSA app. Um, that one is good for home. And also when you're at a show, if you're going to go to a show and you're, and you're thinking about buying cards, especially slabbed cards, I would definitely recommend the, the set registry, uh, because you can just do a quick scan, make sure the card's legit. Uh, that app will tell you roughly what they think the value is, but I wouldn't necessarily go off of that, but it is going to tell you if it's a legit slab and kind of the history of it. So those would be my three. I didn't blow you away with these, Nick. I, I, I mean, I could sit here all day and talk about all the other apps in the in the space. But what would be? I probably stole some of your thunder, maybe. But what are the three that you would choose? Yeah. So it's interesting. You don't need like the craziest technology or like you know the newest, latest crazy app in the hobby. Um, a lot of us there's a lot of people just getting started in the hobby and they don't even know where to network. And I will tell you now, if you truly want to collect something like a set or uh, find very difficult cards, you will have to network and let apps be your friend there. So I would say the most important app for sports cards networking is Instagram. Um, it's a very visual platform. So people show their cards off. There's a lot of dealers at shows. They have an Instagram handle you can DM them and do deals outside of the show or anywhere. They literally have their inventory there. It's fantastic. Um, you know, sign up for Instagram. And if you're not already on, you know, go on there and just Google like sports cards, um, you know, sports cards and like, look at the accounts or, you know, follow me and LZ. We follow a lot of the, a lot of the different people in the industry and different dealers and just start following the people that we follow, um, as well as like a shortcut. So that's critical. Um, Facebook is very important. It's kind of made a comeback a bit with the the groups that are in Facebook. So some of these groups are very niche and very specific. So if you want to collect 1986 Fleer, there's a group of 6,000 people. If you want to collect 
basketball cards is a group with 40,000 people. If you uh, just want to talk about the hobby, there's probably an even bigger group with 100,000 people and, and so on and so on. And again, you just open up the app, go to groups, type in sports cards, and you'll see, you'll see some of them there. So that's critical. I would have never gotten cards and sets and different rare things if I wasn't on Facebook. Um, just talking to these people and networking. Um, it, it's awesome. You know, they're all over the world in the country. Um, and then I'd say for number three, again, this is not like um, earth shattering stuff. YouTube's pretty awesome. You know, you you go on there and you kind of get inspired. I, I remember I was watching uh, Jeff Wilson at Sports Card Investor. He did a, an episode where he opened up his autographed 86 Fleer set and that inspired me to build one. And it was cool. Um, and you'll, you'll get a lot of different people at shows or at the national, maybe you yourself can't make it to a show. Um, people on YouTube are there and they're taking videos, they're doing video shorts and you can kind of get like the vibe. Um, and you know, you could probably get introduced to people that way too. just follow them. And again, just DM them and everything like that. So my side of this is, using social networking apps for actual social networking. It's really crazy. <laughs> um, but that that's kind of where, that's where I would go with it. Yeah, I think we've now covered kind of the standard, let's call it six apps. Like if I think about my day in the collector's space, we're all creatures of habit, right? And And I check Facebook, check Instagram, <laughs> Yep. I check I check eBay cuz there's always a couple cards I'm tracking. Maybe I don't go to 130 point every day. Um but even even YouTube. So hopefully I I think this episode certainly I think covered for most people like these are kind of the standard six tools that you should have in your tool belt. Yeah. And if you really as Nick said, if you really are interested in getting into this or um increasing um your level of interest in this collectible space, you really got to start using these tools. You just got to get comfortable with them. You got to start using them and um, join these communities, these forums, and just just get educated. Just meet people. Yep. Yeah. So this is yeah. the basic stuff. If you um, if you got the basics under and you feel like you're all networked in all these places, again, just um, just hit me or LZ up, and we can show you some of the crazier stuff that we use. So excellent. Cool. All right, Nick. All right, that's another episode of Madness University. <laughs>